Welcome to Inside Your County Government. I'm your host and community engagement coordinator, Doria Fleischer. We're back with another episode of Meet Your Departments, a series where we are here to introduce you, reacquaint you, or just get you more information about one of the many great departments that supports Charles County Government. With us today is Jenny Ellen, our Director of Fiscal and Administrative Services. Thanks for being here today, Jenny. Thanks for having me. So Jenny, I want to start talking about all things fiscal and administrative services mm -hmm. to, so our community understands what you do. Mm -hmm. Can you start by telling us about you, the leader Me. of this great department? Okay. Um, well, I have worked for Charles County Government for over 29 years um, in the budget division, and then I worked my way up, and I've been director for going on five years now. Wonderful. Thank you, and congratulations. Okay. That's a, a nice long career. <laughs> What's the biggest change in fiscal and administrative services from 29 years ago? Like when you think back to when you started to now? What's the most noticeable well, difference? Well, I'd say technology. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we are just, um, you know, implementing our new ERP system for our financial system, which um, it was the same as when I started here in the early 90s. And I can remember, too, like old reports, like those old green and white paper. Yes, or like with hey, the tear yeah, off yeah, tabs. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I would have to go over into the water and sewer billing office. That's where we kept all the documents. And I would have to go get these big, you know, binders. Yeah. And then I would go through and, and everything in spreadsheets. So, I mean, just technology and automation is yeah. probably the biggest change. Nice to have your thin laptop you can just carry yes. around now. Yeah, yes. print from and, anywhere. Yeah, and look up Good. documents, not have to print everything out. Wonderful. All right, so when we say fiscal and administrative <laughs> services, it's such a, a fancy title for a department. Yeah, it's the longest one, I think, of all the departments. Really? <laughs> well, there, that's a good prize to have. We'll have to, I don't know, planning and growth mm -hmm. management? Oh, We'd have to I count letters. Oh, yes, we might have to count letters. I don't know, it's not a competition, okay, Jenny, but it sounds like you're, you're feeling a little competitive <laughs> about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to say it's all things money okay. plus IT. Okay. So tell <laughs> us what divisions that includes when we say all things money plus IT. Okay. Who's in there? Uh, be accounting, uh, budget, purchasing, treasury, and then our IT division. Okay. So that's everything that's under me. And tell us a little bit about each of those divisions. Okay. Um, so I'll start with accounting, and that's headed up by Bill Diatley, who's our chief of accounting, and he's been here um, about 28 years. And he actually spent some of his time in, down in treasury, so that was a good thing. Um, and accounting, basically, besides just handling general accounting functions, um, there's payroll, there's accounts payable, so we got to make sure our vendors get paid. Right. There's accounts receivable, because we have to make sure we get paid. Thank um, um, <laughs> and he also handles um, our water and sewer billing. I want to make sure that the accounts receivable gets the money so that <laughs> the payroll can get me my paycheck every there week. So thank you, Jenny and Bill. <laughs> okay. Um, next, we have our budget uh, division, which is headed up by uh, Jake Dyer. And Jake's been with us for, um, I think he's just celebrating his 21st anniversary. So um, he develops and monitors um, all of our annual operating budgets as well as our CIP. Um, we just adopted the 24 budgets. So I think there's going to be a let's Get Fiscal podcast on that. Yeah, so Jake can, is the star of yes, the Let's Get is. Fiscal series, mm -hmm. and he does a wonderful job about it. Yeah. Um, he also develops corresponding five-year plans because we always need to look to the future so we can plan how things will happen, and, um, and administering grants is under him. So departments individually handle applying for and preparing grant reports, but we monitor everything and send out the bills for it. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, next, we have our purchasing operations, and that's Shanna Reese, and Shanna just celebrated 10 years this year. Um, so purchasing conducts formal procurements that are over 25000 and then they help the departments um, prov by providing oversight for smaller procurements um, under the $25,000. Um, and she's also been really involved with the disparity study, um, which will require code updates and impacts her division. So I'm going to break that down just a little bit. Procurements over 25000 we, Charles County Government, need to spend money on something huge. Mm -hmm. She makes sure that we're following all the rules, we're, we're doing it correctly. Yes. Procurements under twenty five thousand. She just makes sure that departments have what they need, and fo they follow the rules. And they follow. The, it's a lot of following <laughs> the, the rules, rules when it yes. comes to money. Okay. <laughs> and then the disparity study. Can you just touch on it very briefly? Um, well, I was going to say the commissioners are going to be getting an update on that soon, but um, it, it could change um, some of the uh, dollar figures to make okay. it easier for um, smaller firms to bid on things and and such th different things like that. So making sure even our kind of smaller, newer vendors have right. a chance to yes partner with. Right. Charles and and I mean, and, you know, and, um, you know, when we had the disparity study come in, you know, um, we're learning things, you know, they took a look at the way we do things. And like one thing that they brought up was that, um, 
uh, smaller businesses have a hard time preparing for formal procurements. Hmm. So if they knew what was coming, they might be able to prepare. Right. So now we do an annual forecasting and we just sent that out to all the departments now that the budget's approved. So um, we can post and say, hey, here's some items that are going to be coming up. So if this is your area, you can start maybe start preparing. Start. Exactly. That sounds great. It sounds like a win-win that you guys know what's coming. Yes. And that some of our smaller businesses might get a chance to, mm -hmm. to have that contract. That's great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next, we got Treasury. Okay. And that's headed up by Eric Jackson. He's our chief of Treasury, and he's been here for about 28 years. Um, he actually started in the budget office with me. We started about a year apart. Oh, that's um, funny. So, down in Treasury, um, he takes care of collecting and investing the majority of the county funds. And I say majority because we do have pension plans. Okay. And we actually have outside financial advisors that handle pension. That but makes sense. The rest of the county money is, is handled by Mr. Jackson. Um, his staff helps to uh, prepare the tax bills that go out and collect the tax bills. And I mean, there's a lot of different things we collect money for, such as the water and sewer bills right. that are prepared, as well as liquor licenses, permits, dog tags, motor vehicle registration. So all that, any the collection. Money that's coming in. And it's funny him. because Eric is the nicest nicest man he and is. yet when he sends me paperwork <laughs> and I understand that there is this system of like Eric needs to take my money so that Eric can then get me my paycheck That's but right. also I just like it's hard I have very conflicting feelings about yeah. the work he does yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I like to also point out because not, not a lot of people know that besides having the treasurer's office that we have here in the county government building in La Plata there's a satellite office in Waldorf so that's um, located on Route 5 like where the sheriff's annex is so people and a lot of people do use that to go in and make take their water and sewer bills. And also if they have MBA transactions, it's like kind of convenient. Perfect. So. Okay, great. All right. And then ending with information technology, um, Evelyn Jacobson is our chief information officer and she's been with the county for 28 years. So um, IT, as you imagine, basically um, is all about acquiring, implementing, and maintaining our technology infrastructure, the applications, but as well as telecommunications. So they handle the phones as well, right. um, as well as keeping us safe, all our cybersecurity efforts that we have in place. And um, Evelyn is also co-chair on the broadband task force. So she works very closely with the deputy county administrator on that. And I always laugh because um, within the media division, within my division, we joke that I am the most kind of friendly, gullible person. And mm -hmm. I'm the one who, when I get an email, email from someone has to really work hard of like, is this a real email or is this spam that I'm <laughs> well, the one who is? <laughs> right. So when I get your IT um, training, uh -huh. I'm really proud of myself. I've been getting a lot of hundred percent. Yes, I just got a hundred uh, yesterday. Yes, there, so I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> Thank you for, for boosting my self-esteem that I know the difference between a spam attack yeah. and a genuine email. So yeah. really important that they're keeping our information mm -hmm. safe. As mm -hmm. I think we hear so much in the news now mm -hmm. about how governments are mm -hmm. at risk for yes for IT attacks so yeah and Jenny, I listened to the number of years. I lost track I of know. the math. But first of all, it makes me laugh that you guys started around the same time. We did. I say I like to say we grew up together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and such amount of of history and knowledge. I know. Yeah. And, and really in this area, having that institutional knowledge is just really important. So it's so nice that that we have staff that has stayed. Yeah. And that and, wants to and, stay. And, 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 you know, kind of grew through the ranks. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it because uh, said with great love, Jenny, I don't want your job. Like I don't want to do anything involving all this numbers and money. So I'm really glad you guys want to do it and you want to do it for a long time. Mm, yes. Thank you. No problem. All right. Tell us about some of the successes and exciting things happening in your department right now. What What's kind of like, a, ooh, this is cool and new and good. Well, I get, again, what's new and cool to a bean counter might not be new and cool to everybody else. <laughs> you might have a skewed opinion. Yes. Um, like I said, upgrading the financial system to me is just key right okay. now. Um, we implemented one side of it. We still need to get payroll and HR on board. And you think that's just an internal thing, but as we go through the different phases and we maybe get to the next phase of like the budgeting um, component, it may allow us to be um, more transparent and have okay. more cool things out on the website. So it will actually benefit the citizens and something more forward facing that they'll see in the future. Great. So a lot of things on, like I said, technology is always changing and we're always um, trying to do things better. Um, we've already mentioned the Let's Get Fiscal broadcast. You know, we've that been it, loving doing I this. Know. So to give a little background, if, if our listeners and, and viewers haven't tuned in yet, Jake Dyer has been coming in and doing just a quick um, touch on something different about budget. So what people could understand and learn more about how the budget process works. And selfishly, I'm learning a lot <laughs> as I'm hosting the episode. So I, I'm 
double benefit from it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I mean, and it is funny too. I'll get emails from people in different departments and agencies and they tell me that they tune in and that they've learned That's things. Awesome. Yeah. Good. That makes me happy to hear. <laughs> we'll keep it up. <laughs> Um, as I said, the disparity study, I think there's going to be something on the commissioner's agenda coming up. So that will um, re require us to actually update our code and formally okay. change some things in our procurement policies. And that's something that we've been working on for years. Yeah. And then we, we were kind of ready to go, but then the disparity study came along and then it was like, well, that's probably going to make more changes. So right. we kind of tried to incorporate everything at one time, but awesome. it's definitely time to, to update to that and it. just kind of change some dollar figures, you know, if nothing right. else. Um, another thing is after the budget's adopted, um, the kind of the next big thing I feel like in my wheelhouse is, um, getting ready for our bond trip. Okay. So every year we go to New York, um, and we meet with the different rating agencies. Um, we currently have triple A's from all three rating agencies. And it's funny because, um, you know, it, it took us a while to get there. We've, we've been there since 2016, okay. you know, but every year you got to put your best foot forward to get those ratings yeah. to continue. Um, but I did find out that there are uh, of over 3,100 counties in the United States, only 52 have a triple, triple A. That's awesome. Which I found odd because I was like, wow, only 52? Because I know a lot of Maryland counties have them. Well, that's because Maryland's the best. I know. It's all and here. Yeah, nine in Maryland, ha nine of the 52 are in Maryland. So Jenny, I'm going to ask you to, to pause on that because it's exciting news, but I also think that because your brain is so <laughs> high level... <laughs> Give us just a quick backup from that information for sure. just a sec. Okay, so you said bond trip, mm -hmm. you said New York, and you said AAA. Yes. Break it down for us. What okay. does that mean? <laughs> All right. So um, every year, in order to fund our capital improvement program, um, the county issues bonds. So basically, we borrow money um, in order to... Do with schools, do roads, water and the sewer projects, stuff. all the big stuff, yeah. everything in our capital improvement um, program. So when we go to borrow money, um, we get ratings from the agencies. Um, and then that, if the, the better you're rated, um, usually the lower interest rate you get. So just think about yourself personally, you know, this when is you my do, credit score. This exactly. is Charles County's credit score. And we want a good credit score. So we can borrow money and build great things. Am I saying that correctly? You got it. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so here's to a trip to New York. That's right. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. So these are the exciting things. Mm -hmm. What are the, other than the fact that money is always <laughs> tough, yes. uh, what are the, what are the challenges right now? What is fiscal and administrative services kind of struggling with or trying to yeah. figure out? Um, well, I think, I think the challenge is always just trying to fit everything in the budget that we can, yeah. you know, without raising tax rates, you right. know, and there's a lot of needs out there. So, you know, it, it, it takes a lot to kind of go through everything and try to understand people's needs so we can put forth a good budget for the commissioners. But, you know, some things that are really impacting is the blueprint. So we've heard about that with the Board of Education, mm -hmm. that there's certain requirements we have to meet. Um, we've got the Body Worn Camera Program that's getting ready to be rolled out. It's mandated that we do that by 2025. We're getting a little bit of a head start on that. Um, there seems to be a lot of needs for recreation, parks, and tourism, yeah. you know, so we're trying to support that a little more, I feel like, than we have in prior years. Um, and then just keeping up in public safety in general on right. both the sheriff's side and emergency services. It's uh, it, As our county grows, right. everything's going to get more expensive. Yeah. Right. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And nobody wants their taxes raised. No. Yeah. yeah. And on top of that, we have the Morgantown Power Plant, which was our biggest taxpayer right. that, you know, the coal plant's closing down. Right. So um, we were very fortunate, though, that um, we had some surpluses in prior years. So instead of like taking a big cut in revenues, we kind of socked that money away and we're just helping it smooth things out because so otherwise if we, hit. yeah, so it's not as big of a hit. Otherwise we probably would have had to have cut budgets right. and not being able to grow. We're still growing. So we need to add positions. Always a balance. And yes. I would assume that that's a hard, um, a hard position to be in, to, to have your coworkers and partner agencies coming to you and saying like, yeah. Jenny, I need this. I, I need this. And you have to kind of balance. Do I present this? Do I include mm -hmm. this? Do I not? Yeah. yeah. How do you how do you do it? What's kind of your, how do you keep oh. yourself sane and, <laughs> and kind of removed emotionally from that process? Well, I was going to say, um, we, we try to pay attention to what the commissioner's goals and objectives are. And then we work closely with the county administrator department. And, and it really is about meeting with the departments and agencies and mm -hmm. understanding their needs and also them understanding like what constraints we have. Right. Um, so... We have a very good relationship with the Board of Education. You know, I kind of give them an idea of like, hey, I think I got this much money. And then I'm like, no, I don't think I have that much money. How much money do you need? And we right. go back and forth. And, you know, we were able to fully fund their budget this year. But that's also because they didn't give us like a huge ask. 
you know, they understood that our income tax revenues aren't. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. So it sounds definitely. like the good relationships and yes. kind of understanding needs is huge. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, I have really enjoyed all of the, the, the bigger media we've been doing to try to introduce people to, to fiscal, like right. let's yes. get fiscal. Yes. People who want to know more, people mm-hmm. who want to get more involved. How does somebody kind of get more engaged with your department? Um, I would say just the commissioner town halls, okay. you know, and also the new public comment portion yeah. of the commissioner sessions, because um, I pay attention to that, too, mm. because it, it puts things on my radar as to what, you know, citizens are talking about. Right. Also gauging the commissioner's reactions, you know, so it, it kind of helps us develop the budgets and things because we we learn things when the public speaks out as to what's important. I love hearing you say that because I think, I mean, my goal is community engagement is to make sure that people mm-hmm. speak up. Right. And I love hearing that you're actually listening, that I that listen. is, that, that you talk that, that <laughs> more and more people are saying this. So come out to, to the public comment sessions, mm-hmm. have your voice heard. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Anything else you want our community to know about the great and important work you do to keep us earning money, spending <laughs> money, all things money? Um, I think that's about it for today. Wonderful. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll look forward to more Let's Get Fiscal episodes with yes. Jake. And then anytime you want to talk more about any of your other projects, you just let us know and we'll get it out there to the community. All right. Sounds great. Thanks so much for being here. Jenny Ellen, our Director of Fiscal and Administrative Services. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Meet Your Departments. Remember, you can always go back and see other episodes for other departments of what they do and how they do it. And of course, we'll have the rest of the episodes coming out monthly. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care. Stay safe. Stay engaged. For more information on Charles County government, visit our website, www.charlescountymd.gov. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to the county's e-news. Also, don't forget to sign up for our text and email alerts through the Citizen Notification System. You can watch CCG TV on Comcast Channel 95 or Verizon Fios 10, and we're streaming on Apple TV and Roku devices. Just search Charles County Government. You can also subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts by searching Charles County Government. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 